Hi friends, Pastor Jesse here at Pequot Evangelical Church in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where we exist to help you know and follow Jesus. One of the ways that we do that is these daily read-through of scriptures that you are participating in by watching this video. We read a chapter a day to help us uh, learn how to read the Bible together. Uh, not, not only to read the Bible together, but to read the Bible personally and devotionally in our own lives. Right now we're going to read through of the book of Acts. We're in Acts chapter 21. This section of Acts is all about the missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul, focused mainly on his ministry, but the O's that were with him, like the man behind that wrote the letter of, or the book of Acts, the doctor that is Luke. So today, again, Acts chapter 21, you can go ahead and open up your Bibles or your devices to, to Acts 21. <clears throat> And when we had parted from them and set sail, we came to the straight course to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara. And having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had come in the sight of Cyprus, leaving it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload its cargo. And having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days. And through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go into Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we departed and went on our journey, and they all, with wives and children, accompanied us until we were outside the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed and said farewell to one another. Then we went on board the ship, and they returned home. Then we had finished the voyage from Tyre. We went to Potnus, and we greeted the brothers and sisters with them for one day. And on the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go into Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, saying, What are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, Let the will of the Lord be done. After these days, we got ready and we went up to Jerusalem, and some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us, bringing us to the house of Manson of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we should lodge. When we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the other elders were present. After greeting them, he related to one, one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they had heard it, they glorified God, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands there are among the Jews of those who have believed. They are all zealous for the law, and they have been told about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may share, shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for each of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on Paul, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. Moreover, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were seeking to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took, co took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing and some another. And as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. And when he had came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of people followed, crying out, away with him, away with him. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, may I say something to you? And he said, do you know Greek? 
Are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of Assyrians out and into the wilderness? Paul replied saying, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Sicilia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motions with his hands to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in a Hebrew language, saying this. That's where we will pick up in Acts chapter 22. But I think the big idea, it's all focused. These uh, 20 or these over 40 verses are all focused on Paul's first uh, trip to Jerusalem and then what actually happens as he's in Jerusalem. Uh, the first half of the chapter, it, uh, it is prophesied, it is predicted by the Holy Spirit that Paul, when he goes to Jerusalem, he's going to be bound, he's going to be chained, and he's going to be beaten. We see Paul stand bold in the faith, stand bold in his purpose as a proclaimer of the good news of Jesus Christ. Go to Jerusalem anyway, and exactly what the Holy Spirit has predicted has come about. Paul is bound, he is chained, and he is being beaten. And so right now he's taken into custody and he's now asking, we left off there in verse 40 with Paul asking to have the opportunity to speak to the crowd. And so this is one where we're left with a cliffhanger. We're gonna hear Paul, I will give you this point of a fact. Paul is going to be given the opportunity to teach, to talk and to teach this crowd, uh, this mob that is after his life. He's going to have the opportunity to proclaim the gospel in Acts chapter 22 when we gather again. So I invite you to, to join us at that time and hear how Paul presents the gospel to the most hostile of crowds that, that any of us will likely ever face. Join us next time and until then, may God bless.